Hi, I'm Nikki Nechparenko. Um, I am one of the Alchemob members and I'm coming to you from Minneapolis and just showing one of my favorite super easy rainbow color blocking techniques. And I wanted to start what I'm about halfway through just to show you how stinking easy this is. Yes. See, this is my beautiful model friend, coworker, Rachel. So beautiful. our inspo was an opal. Yes. And so those are the colors we're kind of going for. Obviously she's super light and we, I, these are actually diluted 50% with clear. So it looks a lot brighter than it's going to be. But we also want it to fade really pretty because a lot of vivid color I think is about the fade, not necessarily what you walk out with as well. Um, we lightened her last week with the Alkali Unicorn Lightning and the Jack Wynn 10 Volume Bond Creator. I just want to keep everybody's hair happy and healthy and we do, when you do a lot of lightening, I feel like that's very important. <laughs> yes. But What uh, products did you use to prep with Alkali? Uh, we used, let's see, well beyond the Unicorn Lightning, we used Bay Shampoo, no conditioner, and then used, oh, they're right here. Got this one here. Um, actually, I did foreplay first. Foreplay first. Yes, just to add a little bit of protein, strengthen her up. So I did equal sprays of both. Sometimes I feel, depending on the type of hair, she's really, really fine. And it's she doesn't have super coarse curly hair, kind of like I do, where I would use straight unicorn milk. Um, it evens out porosity, kind of think of, Filling in the potholes of a road, this is gonna be your pothole filler. Yes. But if someone's hair doesn't have a ton of potholes, maybe just like a bunch of smaller ones, you would use even just foreplay alone. I really, really like that. Prime and Just to keep her super strong. And then unicorn milk, she will use forever for the rest of her life. Um, it does have a CBD in it, and that's gonna help, like I said, it's gonna fill in those potholes and help or ensure that her color takes more evenly, not just now, but from here on out. Yes. And so you can see like, even just blending it through, I'm not being specific. I want some of this to kind of blend through to the bottom, but you can see it's not picking up any hollow spots. It filled it right in. And then I'm starting at the bottom with my teal green color. She said she didn't want green. And then when we decided <laughs> on the opal, I was like, well, you're getting green. <laughs> Yes, and then with her sectioning, and I think with any type of sectioning, whether you're doing foils, color blocking, rainbows, anything, go by their hairline, go by how obviously how they wear their hair. So with hers, we did, I did a bunch of smaller ones. Sometimes I'll do this with um, bigger sections, depending on what you're going for. With an opal, I feel like there's a lot of, a lot of smaller like veins of color going through. So with her, I went, started this one from where her hairline goes back here. It's kind of like a star pattern. Kind of, yeah, it's basically a pinwheel. If I could flip her around here, I don't wanna to get too we much We took color, some but... clips, so. We'll yep, sure. there we go. Yes, yes, we'll show some pictures. So it's a pinwheel, but each section of pinwheel starts from where, how her hairline is. So this pinwheel here, she parts right here. So this one goes straight through. So her part's right dead center. Yes. And then I ended it right where her recession is started the next one to her ear. So it'll fall very from, beautifully. Yes, and then from ear to right behind, front to back. And none of them are the exact same size, but that's the point. I like the way it's looking so far. Thanks. So Thanks, friend. It's and then some like sections of it, right? It's like slightly darker than an oval right now. So one to give another tip, two things. Um, one, I actually went through, I went every other and just did a little mark so I know what root color is gonna be my base. And then after that, um, sometimes I'll change my mind what goes on the ends, but at least I know that that part is going to be even. And I usually always start in the front, but in this case, I start in the back. Even if she had super long hair, I could just lay it down that way. I don't have to fumble with mesh strips, foils and then the sectioning and everything stays clean. And even if they touch each other, like it's still gonna be fine. Nothing's gonna bleed. Really close. Yes. Beautiful. See, yeah, see, and they can bleed onto each other and that's totally fine. We want it to look melty. 
So you don't have to be super precise. It's super, super easy and like doable.